Good afternoon, everyone. I warmly and happily welcome you to our annual education day. I hope everyone here is doing great and keeping safe. On this special day, the department has a very special program planned. I would like to take this moment to appreciate the in charges, participants, and for taking out your time and joining us. Education Day is celebrated every year on November 11 in our country to commemorate the birth anniversary of India's first education minister, Molana Abul Kalam Azad. I will be the moderator for today. And to start our program, I give time to Ms. Sharon Kikon, Assistant Professor, Department of Education, for the welcome note. Every individual has a right to education that will enable him to develop his faculties and live a full human life, Mauna Abul Kalam Azad said. A very good afternoon to you all. First of all, I thank the chairperson for the time, respected guest speaker, principal, dean, faculty, and students present here. I, on behalf of the Department of Education, would like to warmly welcome each one of you to this commemorative event of Abu Kalam Azad, celebrated as National Education Day. This day, as we are aware that it is remembered in memory of Abu Kalam Azad because he has played a legendary role in the education system, which we are following till date. So the 11th of November since 2008, is regarded as the National Education Day without declaring holiday. Instead, across the country, many educational institutions observe uh, this day by conducting programs and also organizing competitive events among the students and celebrate his birthday to appreciate his works and contributions he has done. Uh, well, our college, unlike the past few years where we celebrate this occasion by uh, organizing competitive events among the students, this year we decided to observe the day by conducting a short program like this, uh, where the main aim is to know the important place and education holds in everyone's life and also to realize that education helps in the better development of a personal, externally, as well as internally. Well, as we continue to attend this program, I hope and believe that uh, we will be made much more exposed to the knowledge of recalling his vision and also his contribution. So I welcome, I once again welcome each one of you. May you all enjoy the event and be inspired. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sharon, for the welcome note. Now we have a song presentation by Vipeni A. Chishi from BA fifth semester. A very good afternoon, everyone. Today, the song which I'm going to present is a mini piece. Thank you. 
Thank you, Vipani Tishi, for the song presentation. Now I give time to Idriusile Irangbe from BA first semester for speech. A very good afternoon to everyone. My name is Inerosila Iranga of the first semester from Education Department. Respected sir, our honorable resource person, and other teachers and mates. Indeed, I'm very honored and privileged to be sharing a few words on this occasion. 
I would also like to thank our teacher for giving me this opportunity. I believe that we're all aware of this program held today, that is 11th November. It is a special and auspicious day, especially for our department. Since 2008, 11th November, it has been celebrated as National Education Day. Why National Education Day? Education, it has become one of the most essential things in one's life. It is necessary to create an awareness of people's responsibility and willingness to contribute to the growth of the nation as well as the well-being of a society. Here is a saying said by Mulana Abul Kalam Azad. Every individual has a right to an education that will enable him to develop his faculties and live a full human life. Well, who was Abul Kalam Azad? Abul Kalam Azad's real name was Said Gulam Mayuddin Ahmed bin Khalidin Al Husseini. He eventually became to be known as Mulana Abul Kalam Azad. He was born on 11 November 1888 in Mecca, which is now in Saudi Arabia, and died in the and died on 22 February 1958 in New Delhi. Azad's father was a Bengali Muslim scholar of Afghan ancestry who lived in Delhi with his maternal grandfather. Mulana Abul Kalam Azad, he was an Indian scholar, an Islamic theologian, independent activist, journalist, and a reformer. In the year 1923, at the age of 35, he became the president of Indian National Congress, and he was also awarded Bharat Ratna posthumously the India's highest civilian honor in the year 1992. India, after gaining independence, he was appointed as India's first Minister of Education. Why National Day is celebrated? National, Educa National Education Day is celebrated on November 11, and it has been celebrated since 2008. The date has been chosen to commemorate the birth anniversary of independent India's first education minister, Abul Kalam, Abul, Mulana Abul Kalam Azad. Mulana Abul Kalam Azad was born on, was born on 8-11, was born on 11th November 1888. Education during post-independence. Post India's independence, the learned turned their focus to education as they knew it would be a fundamental pillar in nation building. Speaking at All India Education on January 16, 1948, Abul Kalam has said, we must not for a moment forget it is for it is the birthright of every individual to receive at least the basic education without which one cannot fully discharge his duties as a citizen. Laying the foundation for an educated India. Understanding the fundamental role of education plays in development of the nation, Mulana Abul Kalam said, as the chairman of the Central Advisory Body of Education, he gave impetus to adult education and literacy. Not only did he lay emphasis on elementary education, but also propagated diversification of secondary, educa secondary education and vocational training. The man behind IITs and other UGCs and other universities. The freedom fighter and visionary was responsible not only for streamlining the education system in the country, but also for seeing the star of the first ever Indian Institute of Technology, IIT, in, Indian, in India in 1951. The man was responsible for setting up the Central Institute of Education in, New, in Delhi, which later became the Department of Education of Delhi University. The setting up the the setting up of the University Grants Commission in 1953 are all credited to his vision. 
He was the primary propagator of Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, and Faculty of Technology of Delhi University, and founder of Jamila Milai Islamic University. Why National, Why National Education Day is celebrated? The purpose of celebrating National Education Day should be to strengthen our educational institutions. It should also remind us to keep raising the quality of education to greater heights. It should be an occasion to remind, to remember Mulana Abul Kalam Azad's contribution in the field of education. So on this day, all the people who are involved in the field of education should come together to seek ways to advance India's prestige in the world as a knowledge society to focus on how to help educate our people. And lastly, let us all renew our vision and commitment to education on this special day that is National Education Day. Thank you one and all. Thank you, Inusile. We now have spoken poetry by Lo Chumbeni Kikon from BA first semester. I give time to you now. A very good afternoon to your all respected guest speaker, teachers, my dear seniors, and to all my fellow friends. Uh, the title of my Poetry is education is supervision. Edu literacy is not the end of education, it is the beginning. One can make his or her life successful with proper training and education. Education is not a single idea or experience, it is a process. And while you are educating, you can't read. It is an answer to a life free of stress. Though some wise men did not know reading and writing properly, Education is a dynamic, is a measure of discipline, feelings of pleasures, and pain correctly. Education is a dynamic process which with times and needs. Education is unfoldment of what is unfolded in the germ. One has to learn all the qualities of hand, heart, and hate. Education helps us to understand the difference between good and bad correct and incorrect, and uh, right and wrong. Education is the pillar of my independence. It does not have any ending. Education is the process of science and technology. It fosters national education and international understanding. Education needs, needs expands and advances biological, social, and psychological needs. Education is a complete living and attainable cave guaranteed for an external seat. I just feel we all are in this, in this stage of life as we all have a mission. It purifies my mind, education is supervision. Thank you all for your patient listening. Thank you, Luchumbeni. We now have a very special guest and resource person, Dr. Boila Pali Venkata Rao. He has done his MSc in Maths, MA in Psychology, MED qualified, and is a PhD holder. His areas of expertise are mathematics, education, educational psychology, teacher education, methodolog methodology of educational research and statistics, and I ICT. He is currently serving as an assistant professor in Nagalan University, a central university in Kohima. Sir, we are very honored to have you in our midst. You may take the time.
Yeah, thank you for your nice words. Uh, thank you, dear uh, chairperson, uh, dear uh, Tija Sanu Chesi, and uh, uh, welcome note given by Miss Sharon Kikan. Uh, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to talk about uh, one of the very important uh, person and also who has uh, given great contribution to the education of India. And first of all, uh, I would like to share my screen with the permission of our uh, chairperson. Shall I share my screen, dear chairperson? Yes, sure. Yeah, yeah. Please stop uh, sharing screen from your side. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for giving again uh, opportunity uh, to talk about uh, uh, on this uh, topic, recalling the vision and contribution of India's freedom fighter, educationist, the great personality, Maulana Abul Kalam Ajat. So before going to in detail, I would like to wish you all uh, my best wishes and wish you all a very happy National Education Day. And uh, I have already, uh, I all, uh, you are all aware about my educational qualification. Why I am mentioning here, I don't have any uh, very great uh, uh, background of educational background regarding history. So this is all about uh, this topic mainly, it is all about uh, history related thing. Okay, anyhow, during the preparation for this lecture, I have been uh, gathered some information I would like to share with you all at this junction. So, um, so this important since our you are all uh, experts in the field of education and uh, uh, I also, I am very sure uh, that Tetsuo College is one of the best college in, uh, in the state of Nagaland to providing quality education uh, through various uh, uh, disciplines. And all you all aware about the importance of education. Okay, briefly, the main importance of education is if citizens of any country, if they are aware about their rules and about their country's rules and regulations and mainly their responsibilities then only they will be acted as full-fledged citizen of the nation so for this purpose the citizen must be educated the must be educated so then only that educated citizen will be will be acted will be behave according to the nation's demand Okay, so that's why the entire process, if the entire process is going rightly, then automatically the, the nations of the development, development in the nations and as well in the respective states will be progress a lot. So this is the main uh, importance of education. And also uh, education as a fundamental block of growth of human civilization. This is also very, very important. These are all four points I have been collected from the uh, some uh, I think I can say these are the thoughts of our great legend um, Maulana Abul Kalam Ajad visions like this. <clears throat> so this is the eminent personality. So already one of our students, one of our students 
has been presented very nicely about his uh, uh, a very important information about him so this is the great personality uh, maulana abul kalam azad on uh, national education day on behalf of this day we are going to again um, recalling his contributions and his personal life okay what could we learn from his from his life so uh, what good things we can take and we could uh, adapt in our life okay so <clears throat> and also from this picture also you can see his uh, date of birth and date of death also he was born in uh, i will i will give you some brief profile about him so that's why my presentation will be will be uh, in various parts like i will give a brief profile uh, 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 be profile of the great eminent personality and uh, about his personal life and uh, some kind of uh, uh, early revolutionary some activities also i would like to mention and uh, what kind of activities he was he was uh, involved he was involved uh, during pre independence india or post independence india how his services was recognized uh by the government of india at that time so what were the challenges really he was faced okay to set the to set the education system in india in a right way okay so these are all the things i would like to share with you all so i am again mentioning i am not a history background educational background person okay please kindly bear and also uh, one of your uh, student also has presented i think uh, this is the one of the great uh, decision uh, taken by the government of india in the year 2008 okay and particularly on september 11 they have been decided the ministry of human resource development education was decided uh, to celebrate to celebrate of this uh, maulana abul kalam azad birthday that is november 11 as national education day uh, with effect from 2008 onwards okay so the the what they have clearly mentioned the ministry has decided to uh, commemorate the birthday of this great son of india by recalling his contribution so they have used the great word like great son of india means we could understand how much he has given contribution to the field of education in india so every year with effect from 2008 onwards will be celebrated as the national educational day without declare declarate declaring it a holiday so some of the days some of the days also national importance days which we are celebrating so we had some holidays on those things but, okay so but this particularly national education day it should not be a holiday why because the education institutions must be involved in some variety of activities and students also should be uh, should be involved by conducting so many um, so many activities related to academics okay so in order to involve all the teachers and the students that's why so uh, it was declared like without declaring it a holiday so this is very good point and also on 11th november the birth anniversary of maulana abul kalam azad so the the great freedom fighter we are we are celebrating we are celebrating his birth anniversary as our national educational day by recalling his contributions to the field of education in indian system okay and also um as our one of our students also told mention he was the first education minister of uh, independent india okay who served who was, he was in the in his office with the designation like education ministry of education okay minister of education after later that later that our uh, uh, the ministry has na the name was changed like ministry of human resource and development okay and again recently uh, recently through the uh, new education uh, national education policy 2020 again the uh, the name has been changed like ministry of education so uh, at the uh, at the independent at the beginning in 1947 the ministry name was like this ministry of education okay and uh, he was not only the minister of education at that time he was also ministry ministry of education and national resources and uh, um some scientific research also so this was the nomenclature of 
ministry at that time so he was in his office as a education minister from uh, with effect from 15th august 1947 to 2nd february uh, 1958 until his death and this is the brief uh, kind of information about him so uh, we all knew his name like maulana abul kalam azad it is fine but we also must be aware about his full name okay so here the first line saying that this is the full name so very lengthy okay so we should we should able to pronounce his name perfectly that is also one important point one important aspects in in celebration of his birth anniversary as a national education day so his full name is like this maulana sayed abdul kalam gulam muhyiddin ahmad bin khairuddin al husaini azad this is the full name of his this great great legend okay so we i shortly we can easily maulana abul kalam azad okay so he was born on um, november 11 okay 1888 in the year of 1888 okay so place of birth here uh, this is the uh, place of birth that is makkah now it is makkah it is located in saudi arabia not in our country okay so means he was born in uh, he was born in makkah so parents so mohammad khairuddin father okay he was the father and he was a bengali muslim of afghan or uh, origin so he was also a muslim but he belongs to afghanistan at origin okay and uh, his mother name was alia mohammad khairuddin because why please kindly this is also very very important why because before going to discuss his contribution to the field of education we should recall him the the present generation also should be aware about this his brief profile that's why i am sharing here okay his mother name was alia mohammad khairuddin mother the daughter of a rich arabian sheikh so like a foreign country so arabian sheikhs okay and also uh, his spouse name was uh, julaika begum julaika begum and he do this couple don't have didn't have a uh, children okay this is also one noted point okay and also about his education he was only home school and almost he was learned he was uh, acquired knowledge through independent learning this is very very important and he was he was gained almost the knowledge through self taught okay and he was closely associated with the indian national congress this is one of the uh, leading national party in our india and he was also closely associated with the some movements like indian national movement okay that is uh, uh, and also some political political ideals also like this and he belongs to the uh, religion of islam okay and some publications like that gubar e kathir okay and also india wins freedom he, he it is his his life history okay so india wins freedom it was released in 1978 and also uh, as our one of the student here like mentioned about his occupations like he was a, uh, a very famous poet he was a very good scholar and he was a great journalist and also a great freedom fighter and in addition to all these kind of occupations he was the great educationist okay so and he was passed away very sadly we to we need to discuss about this one at the age of 69 years he was passed away due to some heart stroke and uh, by by considering his all contributions um, the government of india has given the great civil civil civilian award in our india that is bharat ratna was given to him in 1992 after his death okay so now we have some great memorial in delhi also this is the brief information about him and also uh, this is uh, all about his brief educational uh, his educational related things okay so anyhow he was got the first education from his own father after that also he, he got some education from famous teachers in this uh, relevant area and uh, almost all his uh, education education was gone through uh, some different language like arabic persian okay 
and after that he was interested to study the philosophy geometry mathematics and algebra means he was good at all this field and also he learned the english language and history of the world and politics by studying himself so from this point of view we we also should be realized okay if you have burning desire to learn some new area of discipline no need to go any teacher no need to go to any kind of institution we should learn by our own by using the reliable sources that's what we can take the good point from him studying independent learning studying by ourselves okay so he was the great uh, uh, very knowledgeable persons in the various various uh, domains disciplines like philosophy mathematics and english language and history world history so how it was possible because of only self interest and self learning and through independent learning and also uh of course how he was uh, he was influenced uh, in order to participate in kind of some national movements or some in kind of some revolutionary activities because of he was met some great uh, persons uh, that uh, bengal's leading revolutionaries that is arvind the great arvind ghosh and also sri sham sundar chakravarti and because of them uh, because of them he was influenced by these two people and he was decided to join in the revolutionary movement against to fight with the british rule okay so we also uh, need to know how he was influenced by some others okay so from this point also we could also for time to time we could also influenced by some others by by some good people and we can also decide our um, future also and and also with this kind of things he was set up some kind of two secret revolutionary centers throughout the north india and bombay within two years so in order to in order to uh, give some education uh, to the youth of the india uh, to fight against to fight against um, the british rule and also like we 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 noticed him like a great poet and he was also great journalist so with this effect with because of that only he was very fond of to start weekly urdu newspapers okay called all hilal to increase the feeling of patriotism among muslim uh, community people okay but uh, okay i will tell you about this bro okay next also in continuation of the uh, previous slides and also his four fathers also came from some foreign uh, uh, afghanistan area okay during the uh, the great mogal emperor babar period okay and also um, azad this means it is a kind of some muslim community azads okay that is also decent eminent uh, scholar of islam uh, islam community and also in particularly in 191890s okay he turned to kolkata along with the family so this is the things and also this is already repeated and also few important points about his early life come education so uh, and also he was started some monthly magazine also monthly magazine that is uh, uh, nairang e alam in um, uh, 1899 okay so uh, he was uh, 11 uh, so means he was a good at, uh, writing in magazines he was good at writing some magazines and articles okay to give some kind of orientation to the uh, citizens of india and he was uh, when he was 11 years old his mother was passed away that was very sad so right after 2 years with some reasons at the age of 13 years uh, azad was married uh, to a young lady that is julika bega so i have given her background so anyhow um, the, our um, our our uh, uh, azad ji was married at the age of 13 as per their community rules and regulations i think and also uh, he was also influenced why because he was a very good expert he was very good expert in the history of uh, uh, world history so that's why he was uh, visited many countries 
okay and also during the uh, visiting many countries again he was influenced by some foreign uh, uh, foreign persons like one mustafa kemal pasha okay so this is also persons and also uh, some he was also visited turkey and he was he was he had close association with some young turks movement at that time maybe that there was a some movement also was going on in turk uh, in turkey okay so anyhow he had gained all this knowledge by visiting uh, different countries and also he has visited the the, the entire egypt countries turkey syria france and from this visiting he noticed all the uh, very good knowledge and also earlier i mentioned he was also met grave dead eminent personalities from the west bengal okay and these all people the all people have been influenced very well uh, this our azad so that's why these all people helped him in developing a radical political views okay to fight against the british rule so then he started to uh, participate in the indian national movement and also he was closely associated with the uh, top leaders in the uh, during the indian national movement and also one important point here so uh, at that time we if uh, you are all aware about what has what was happened in the indian national movement and what was really happened during the partition of uh, this country into uh, like pakistan and uh, india so there are many uh, muslim politicians who are always thinking about uh, they always suggested to uh, the government please uh, please divide the country based on the uh, community but he was he was quite against to the troll so that's why always those muslim politicians who are more inclined towards the communal issues without focusing on the national interest okay so uh, so dividing country uh, as per the based on the community he was he was quite opposite to that concept so uh, also he also rejected the theories of communal separatism advocated by the all india muslim league so all india muslim league this was the great uh, one of the uh, major organization which was uh, played very uh, an important role in the indian educational uh, uh, freedom movement i think so uh, also he rejected the uh, their uh, their ideology okay since uh, even though he was belongs to that particular community okay that is the great point okay here he had great thoughts okay to protect the india and to protect um, the welfare of the indian citizens okay he was he was uh, he was uh, uh, quite opposed the communal separatism and also uh, this is also things but but he was, since he was the great journalist so he was started weekly journal and as well as he was started monthly magazine also but the both are uh, always highlighting the some uh, problems uh, uh, faced by the common indians and the the negative uh, ideology or oh, they are implementing uh, implementing by the uh, british india so the all these things uh, highlighted through this kind of his literature so but uh, but this was very famous one also this all hilal so at that time uh, this was uh, this was sold around 26 26000 copies in 1914 uh, the british government put a ban on this uh, things okay and after again he has started one another newly uh, new weekly that is called all balak but uh, the the british india the british government has been failed to put a prohibition on this uh, writings of maulana azad through this all balak journals and also uh, this is about uh, uh, some uh, i think uh, dear chairperson my voice is go no issue na clear dear chairperson yes sir you okay thank clear. you thank you and also i would like to bring to your kind notice uh, i think these are not your latest issues uh, i mean uh, uh, everyone will get some uh, through some good document so what kind of activities he have been involved in the uh, uh, pre independence activities 
okay anyhow he was entered in the um, uh, on board with the khilafat movement during the uh, 1920s that is that was also one of the major issue in the uh, indian national movement okay and also uh, he was he became involved with the indian freedom struggle through the non cooperation movement okay that is uh, initiated by the gandhi uh, the, uh, in that uh, non cooperation movement i think there was a um, this khilafat issue was played as a major role okay and uh, uh, okay anyhow uh, when uh, since he had a close association with gandhi so uh, very simply he was adapted uh, the 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 ideology of gandhi ji and uh, the philosophy of gandhi ji and he was implemented in his life and also he was traveled over the country giving the speeches and leading various programs of the movement okay so and also um we can also get like we have some documents like he had a very close association with vallabhai patel and also dr babu rajendra prasad the eminent personalities okay so Uh, that's why he was influenced by many um, uh, persons great personalities like gandhi ji or sardar vallabhai patel or babu rajendra prasad or someone uh, arvind ghosh okay so because of this kind of um, he has good association with good people so what we could understand here we also if we have good association with uh, with good people then we will be also very good in our future okay so this is also one important point we could notice it from this point and also um i think due to some issues when he was participating in uh, indian national movement or along with some other congress leaders he was arrested in 1942 and he was released in 1946 so it seems almost around 4 years he was in the jail due to some issues okay and also as i told he was opposed he was opposed like anything the idea of partition based on the religion and was deeply hurt when the idea went to forward to give a rise to pakistan okay he was he was he have been opposing but but he was on he was not able to stop this idea so anyhow finally uh, finally that idea has been forward and that was happen okay so uh, and also during the violence of what whenever the the the, the country was uh, uh, partitioned uh, uh, as per the communalism uh, ideology so uh, at that time the violence the high level of violence was happened okay so in order in during that one he again visited some areas in uh, india in order to save the muslims okay so uh, maulana azad assured to take up the responsibility for the security of muslims in india why because Uh, that was uh, that was the, the the partition of india the partition at that time in 1947 was happened uh, due, through the uh, some communalism so that's why he was uh, came forward to take responsibility for the security of the uh, muslims who are stay who were staying in india at that time that is also great uh, leadership and uh, post independence activities also we could see uh, right after that um, anyhow he was visited the most of the some areas in india like bengal assam punjab etc so uh, where the the places where uh, the, the affected like anything okay uh, because of this uh, partition uh, that uh, country bifurcated so and also he helped in establishing the from this points we could understand how how much he was good human being okay how he had good thoughts to 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 take uh, some welfare to take to, to save their uh, community people and as well as other people also okay so from this point we could understand he was so good human being he had enough kind okay so um, and also during this uh, uh, camps i think he was also ensured that he was given he was supplied uninterrupted supply food for other and other basic materials okay so and this is also very important point and uh, uh, yeah this is also one important point as opposed to the mohammad ali jinnah so who was the founder of pakistan okay azad also advocated for the ending separate electorates based on the religion and called for a single nation committed to the secularism secularism 
okay i am not competent with talk about secularism but only because of him only because of him our india is a country under secularism okay so that is a, i i could say that point okay so uh and also uh, to to be uh, post independent country activities continues like um, anyhow he has given a good contribution uh, through involving in the various national movements okay anyhow his contribution his contribution was not to overlooked okay so anyhow finally he was appointed as a, uh, as a india's first minister of education and also he was played important role in inducted in the constituent assembly to draft the india's uh, constitution okay and also this is the important point when he was in his office like a uh, as a minister of education uh, during he, his tenure a number of measures was undertaken to promote primary education and secondary education and scientific research through scientific education okay and also by establishing some various universities which are now very famous okay and also a promotion of avenues of research and higher studies so this uh, when i was um, during he, his tenure he was concentrated on this many areas okay and he he concentrated on all the levels of education that one we could understand from here okay he he concentrated primary education and as well as secondary education and also um, vocational training vocational education and lifelong education and university education also everything he was uh, concentrated from this point we could understand that and now from here uh, now from here i would like to uh, share uh, some of the contributions uh, uh, given by the the eminent personality and great educationalist okay uh, maulana abul kalam azad to the indian educational system so anyhow um, uh, even uh, pre independent india or post independent everyone was aware why because the education is the main pillar or fundamental pillar in any nation building so but in the pre independence of india i think there was uh, there was no freedom for uh, our government to implement our their our 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 own ideology uh, okay to implement or to give education as per the indian context but whenever we had post independent india's independence so we had some little bit freedom to uh, to um, to inculcate or to provide uh, education with special reference to indian culture so they realized like this and also when he was uh, uh, when he was uh, some uh, spoke something in in one conference which was held in uh, uh, 19 jan uh, i mean 16 january 1948 he he told like that we must not for a moment forget it is a birth right of every individual to receive at least the basic education without which he cannot fully discharge his duties as a citizen this was the realization this was the realization from his side so i think these all thoughts we could take uh, uh, like Uh, the great eminent personality or great educationalist maulana abul kalam azad's visions okay to provide quality education in india at all levels at end that when he was in uh, in the chair of uh, ministry of education there was a great challenges like at that time uh, there was uh, 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 this was the reeling through the years of exploitation was there because of british ruling ruled and the nation was suffering from the widespread of illiteracy these are the major challenges so uh, because of his ideology because of his realizations he was done everything was very uh, very uh, in a systematic way in order to establish in order to establish right education the base the basic education in india he did like uh, he, he he performed his duty in a right way and also uh dear students i think uh, uh, laying the foundation for an education uh, educated india why because uh, when he was taken the charge as a uh, minister of education as the first uh, minister of education for uh, independent india and at that time also there was a, uh, he was the he was the first chairman of the cabe that uh, that, that that was the body looking the the overall education system at that time 
and also he was also uh, as he has uh, done very good things uh, for the welfare of the indian education system through uh, cabe as the uh, as the chairman of that uh, organization and also he was given a great importance to the adult education and literacy so why because that that, that time they, they, there was very low literacy in order to improve that one so in order to give education especially to the adult adult people so he was encouraged the adult education and literacy now in our india in our india we have a great educational system that is on adult education and literacy okay only because of his ideal ideology now, now in our indian education national importance institutions and as well as state state educational importance institutions everywhere the departments have been established like adult education okay and also uh, he was also uh, worked very uh, in a systematic way in order to improve the quality elementary education and as well as secondary education along with vocational training okay so and uh, now in the new national education policy 2020 also i hope you are all aware about how much importance has been given to vocational training vocational education so vocational education will be played very important role in 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 the future why because the the, the according to the new education policy uh, the 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 respective bodies are going to introduce vocational uh, uh, training vocational education as one of the major discipline from uh, class 8 onwards so then after few years the 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 education the, the youth of india will be uh, will be experts on vocational training and vocational education then they will take uh, uh, full pledged any kind of they, are, they they will be very dareful to take up of any kind of vocations vacations in their life so this is also uh, we could see how he had the great thoughts now we are also now we have different education system it is also it is going on ahead based on his ideology that that point we must understand here and also dear students i think uh, uh, in our uh, the, the developing of uh, uh, education system in india so the planning commissions also have been played an important role okay and after that Uh, the, during the, since I, why I, I am bringing this one it was happened in 1950s at that time he was the minister of minister of education national resources and uh, scientific research wing okay so at that time also um, he has given great contribution uh, i also he had uh, uh, close association he worked with close association with the planning commissions also that's why um the close uh, the commissions also worked like a blueprint for the development of different aspects of life including education thereafter many successive plans that is five year uh, plans were were have been developed and implemented so during this all these kind of things i have coded i have mentioned here some of these during this main goals of um main goals of this five year plans with special reference to education is to achieve universal elementary education okay and also to eradicate literacy so because of whatever we just uh, uh, have discussed through previous slides the all the same ideology also they have been included in this um, in this uh, national uh, uh, five year um, uh, that planning commission okay so uh, in order to improve the education at all levels and also in order to establish vocational and skill training programs yes right now in india we have wonderful vocational and skill training national importance institutions also available okay and also um they have been focused on technical education science education environmental education and with morality and also the relationship between school and work this is very very important now in the new national education policy also has given great importance to the uh, values morality and the also it, it has been highlighted like there should be some great relationship and close association between school education and work education okay whenever there is lacking whenever there is a big gap between the school education and work education then students are getting confusion whatever they are learning in the school classroom 
whenever they went to in the society there is no chance to apply that knowledge acquired through the classroom only because of because of huge gap between this academic education and school education so see at that time he was also um, thought there must be close association between these two areas so see now the same ideology also it seems whatever he has ideology whatever he had thoughts we are continuing on his thoughts that is my intention to say about these issues and also one very important point to provide facilities for high quality education in every district of the country yeah this is also one very one very important point here i think because of only now in our higher education system or in any school education system almost we have a, a sufficient number of schools in every district of the country and also a number of um a number of national importance institutions also have been set up have been set up in every state and also almost in some of the states in india they are also establishing uh, some state universities some state university in, in each district at quarter also so see how he had thoughts in order to provide high quality education he had a thought like every district of the country should be established some higher education institutions so now it is happening so and also uh, some of the things uh, like and uh, from the 1947 why because he was there he was there as minister in the ministry as a concerned minister of education and from 1947 to 1958 okay and also during this period i think during his tenureship there was some important commissions have been set up to 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 go for some educational reforms so the first one is the university uh, university education commission that was the first commission in the independent india it was uh, it was uh, it was um, worked under the uh, chairmanship of our great uh, and another eminent personality that is dr sarvepal radhakrishna so what he has made some recommendations regarding the reorganization of the courses so reorg what was the need what was the need to reorganization of the courses already courses was there the reorganization of the courses that must be with a special reference to the indian context that that must be with a special reference to the indian culture so because the because of that there was reorganization of the courses and techniques of evaluation techniques of evaluation and media of instruction see in this present in the present new educational national education policy 2020 also all these points have been highlighting why because reorganization of the courses men with with special reference to local context with respect with special reference to the society needs and demands and also media of instruction also highlighted what what uh, in uh, nep 2020 has highlighted minimum of instruction so the primary education should be in the minimum of mother tongue mother tongue or in regional language or if it is also suggested the the minimum of instruction in mother tongue or in re either regional languages preferable up to class 8 also so anyhow minimum of instruction also very very one of the important point and also the the commission has discussed about student services and as well as the recruitment of teachers and uh, next commission was secondary education commission 1952-53 focused main law on secondary education and as well as teacher education so these were the commissions was also set up uh, during his tenure and each and every commission has did well okay to improve the Uh, education quality to improve the education to set the education system in india at a different levels like higher education secondary education and teacher education okay and also this is also mentioned i am about some five years plans okay so i am very sure through this planning commission concept only our education system in india has been grown at the next level uh, because of these things and also i highlighted about these things okay this is all uh, university education commission okay there also uh, the commission was more focused on increasing the reach of elementary education in the country 
by bringing the changes in the service provided to the students okay and also these are the points already i have discussed and secondary education uh, secondary education also uh, also focused on mostly the teachers education such that so the teachers education must be uh, was designed only to to prepare teachers for the nations okay and also uh, uh, the but in the in the classroom teaching uh, the teachers and the students should be together they should maintain some interacting interaction the needful interactions uh, within the classroom so this one also suggested at the in the secondary education commission and dear students i would like to mention briefly about his more contributions to the uh, indian education system like as our one of students also has mentioned um so under his uh, uh, tenure maybe uh, the the great uh, university grants commission okay it was uh, uh, set up and it was uh, um, it was uh, um, inaugurated by the uh, uh, late uh, sri maulana abul kalam azad okay i hope you are all aware the ugc uh, came into the existence of 28th december 1953 okay later it became a uh, some statutory organization of government of india by act, by uh, by an act of uh, parliament in 1956 okay why why because this was established in 1953 and why it came uh, an statutory means an independent organization under government of india only in order to modify in order to make the coordination or determination and maintenance of standards of teaching examination and results in university okay so this is the main agenda at that time and also uh, in order to in order to uh, ensure the um, the effectiveness of uh, region wise uh, that's why uh, some uh, around six regional centers of uh, ugc has been set up have been set up okay one at pune other hyderabad kolkata bhopal gauhati bangalore and also the main office located in delhi you are all aware about it okay but i would like to mention something um the newly recently one another organization also came into the uh, came onto the screen that is higher education commission of india simply it is called heci okay i think we heard it is going to take over the regulatory functions of the ugc and aicte okay so but as my understanding there will be ugc and aict etc but to release the to look after the this all nine um, to maintain standards and to prepare norms for education okay so now our education uh, also is is going ahead with special reference to ugc regulations and norms okay and this is the premier body to set up the standards and norms and also he had also established a iiac and school of architecture and planning so as our one of the student told um, he was the behind man to establish various central universities various premier premier institutions like iiac okay indian institute of science and also some iits okay and also um, he was also established uh, the first iit in india indian institute of technology at kanpur okay and also he was the founder of some very good uh, um, uh, academies like sangeet natak academy in 1953 sahitya academy to entertain the literature okay sangeet natak academy to entertain the music and lalit kala academy these are all working very well right now okay in order to promote all these academies have been set up under his leadership to promote education and culture in the country okay and also and also he had established i think i would like if you have if you are aware about indian institute of science i would like to give more clarity why because the indian institute of science which was located which is located in bangalore which was one of the best educational institutions in india okay and it was actually established in 1909 by here we mentioned he had also established iisc but here one clarification the the uh, indian institute of science it was established in 1909 okay 
so in collaboration with some industrialist the main jamshed ji tata ji and the mysore royal family and the government of india by by three by these three collaborations the indian institute of science was set up okay and later it it was it is a public and deemed and research university for higher education and which is offering some uh, research degrees uh, in science and engineering and design and management and all and also this is one of the premier uh, premier body premier uh, one of the institution and also it was selected in 2018 as a institution of eminence by the government of india and also uh, recently also uh, as per the some higher education report so in the in the top world top 200 education institutions in india there are four institutions uh, have been placed in the top 200 world top 200 in, uh, universities like institutions the one of the iisc and also one of the iit uh, iit of karakpur also okay so these are the things have been have been established by himself why because whenever uh, india got freedom and he was the first concerned minister he was uh, he was also uh, executed his plans to improve the performance of iisc that's why he has given contribution to the greatly to the indian institute of science also this is also we could uh, these are all the uh, some few of the things and also iit karakpur this is one of the uh, famous um, uh, iit in india ma'am Yes, yes, yes. We'll wait for you. No need. I have it. We will come out, friend. No problem. Okay. Mm -hmm. All the best. Yes, thank you. And also, uh, yeah, mainly, mainly this IIT Kharagpur, Indian Institute of Technology Kharagpur, it was mainly, uh, it was uh, uh, set up by him in 1951. Okay. This was the his. We we all treat him. Uh, uh, must take it as a his largest contribution to the country, where the Indian East of Technology. Okay, and he under it was uh, under his leadership. The first IIT was it was set up in. Uh, he truly believed that the potential of IIT IITs, and he was also noted that he has given statement during the inaugural of IIT in 1951. Now the same lines now it came to true. so what he has mentioned exactly i have no doubt at all the establishment of this institution will form a landmark in the progress of higher higher technological education and research in the country, uh, country. when he was told these lines it was it was happened in 1951 so what is happening today it was all these statement came into true very true 100% true it is true enough okay today it iits has created a nice for themselves so these are the public national importance institutions and also uh, some other educational institutions also have been set up like he was the founder of jamia millia islamia at aligarh in uttar pradesh and he was the founder and he was also elected as a member of the foundation committee and he was invited to go for lay foundation in 1920 and in 1934 also again he was assisted he was assisted in the shifting of the campus of jamia millia islamia to new delhi the this is nowadays this is the one of the renowned university in india so which is giving providing quality education higher education to the thousands and lakhs of students and giving doing quality research so and he was dreamed like that now all these things came into very true nowadays and also as our one of our students also has mentioned that um he was also established a central institute of education in delhi now later it came to known as the department of education under the university of the delhi sir oh going okay sir padan dostane uh management faculty on that okay i will meet in the evening sir yeah 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 dear my colleagues all they are going okay no issue so this is the uh, great contributions made by the um, our eminent personality maulana abul kalam azad
Uh, sir, sir, it will take time, sir. Yeah. <clears throat> and also few important points. I try. I think he was also has had close association with Indian National Congress. Okay, he was the um, uh, he was became uh, he became a youngest president of the INC at the age of thirty uh, five. This is also one of the wonderful achievement. And Ajad used to write poems in Urdu. Yeah, this is this is his intellectual abilities. I am telling about his intellectual abilities. So and also uh, people also known him as a, a warrior with a with a pen. And also, as I told, he also established a higher education institutions. Okay, uh, he also have been worked for the free education in the country. And also, dear students, I think later after after few years, the government of India also has been set up. one one national importance education institutions uh, like on behalf of his name that is maulana abul kalam azad institute of asian studies if you have time kindly visit this uh, asian this uh, particularly autonomous body under the ministry of culture it is working to improve the cultural standards in india if you have pray if you have time kindly visit and you will be all be noticed the the works is doing by this Uh, one of the premier institution. Okay. Okay. Okay, dear students. I, I uh, sorry, dear so the dear participant. I think uh, you all had given me a wonderful time. I would like to conclude my thoughts like with these kind of statements. So anyhow, um, the, our great personality and great educationist, come freedom fighter, was also highlighted, respected throughout his life as a man of high moral integrity. okay so he was the man behind the all iits and many kind education institutions in the country so now we are all enjoying the fruits of his thoughts his contributions so we should not we should never forget him and his contributions and we are all aware about his uh, ideology and we must be aware about his ideology and all and um for his invaluable contribution to the nation Maulana Abul Kalam Azad was posthumously awarded India's highest civil civil civilian honor that is the Bharat Ratna in 1992 so he actually he was deserved it before that also but due to some political issues it it came to after his death it was happened after his death so anyhow dear students i would like to conclude with this final statement so it is hence benefiting to honor um the memory of the man behind the india's educational uh, might be celebrating his birthday as national educational day for every year we are all very happy to uh, celebrate his birthday anniversary as in the form of national education day every year i hope today also i hope your college has been involved your students in variety of programs anyhow thank you thank you one and all thank you dear organizers now uh, now i am going uh, over to uh, over to our honorable chairperson uh, madam tejasono Thank you, sir, for the commemorative speech and for reminding us about how great the legend Maulana Abul Kalam Azad was. Yeah. We have reached the end of the program. I give time to Miss Munawala Lohe, Assistant Professor, Department of Education, for the vote of thanks. Yeah so uh good afternoon everyone and uh, a very happy national day uh, national education day to you all and um yeah i take this privilege uh to to say a words of gratitude on this special occasion of national education day the 11th of november 2020 Uh, on behalf of education department at so college i would like to say uh, thank you uh, for you know sir for warmly uh, accepting our invitation to be the guest speaker for today's event that is the national education day uh, which is celebrated 
uh, which is celebrated to commemorate the birth anniversary of Sri uh, Maulana Abul Kalam Azad. Uh, thank you, sir, for uh, consider for your consider consideration and uh, for having chosen to be a part of this event, despite uh, you having other responsibilities and uh, other engagements. Um, we appreciate your uh, for you giving your yeah. We appreciate uh, for giving uh, your valuable time and effort. And indeed, uh, we are honored and privileged, uh, you know, for the opportunity to listen to a person like you, uh, somebody who is serving in one of the prestigious and uh, perhaps the uh, oldest uh, higher educational institutions in our state of Nagaland. And we, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, thank, thank you, sir, especially for, um, yes, for also mentioning and sharing in detail uh, about the personal life and educational uh, background of uh, Maulana Abul Kalam Azad and also, uh, you know, his enormous contribution in the field of education. I hope we all have learned a valu valuable lesson from his, uh, from the speech given by our resource person, uh, Dr. B. Venkata Rao. And uh, sir, we look forward to and for your valuable wisdom and guidance even in the days to come. And uh, sir, it is, it is also our prayer and hope that you continue to share, uh, contribute and impact our community with your enormous wisdom, knowledge and resources. Um, yeah, yeah, I am doing, I am doing for the welfare of uh, Naga great tribes. All right, yeah, yes. and. And also, I, I have visited to... your uh, Tetso College at one time. Yes, sir. All right, yeah. I have visited your and... department, I think. All right, yeah, yes, sir. And I also would like to take this time to appreciate the participants. Tejase uh, Nochase, BA fifth semester, in Rusile Irangbe, BA first semester, and Luchumbeni Kikon, BA first semester, for their contribution, uh, for their um, cooperation, effort, and time. Uh, they have given for the success of this event and uh, may you continue to inspire others with your gifts and talents and we we look forward to your uh, to more of your co cooperation and participation in days to come and uh, last but not least i will want to thank each and every one who have attended today's webinar session uh, for having chosen to celebrate this special event, uh, National Education Day, under the team, recalling the vision and contribution of Maulana Kalam Azad, uh, India's freedom fighter and uh, educationist. I hope and believe that on this day, we are not only reminded uh, of Abul Kalam Azad's great vision and contribution to, our, to education and our country, but I believe uh, that on this day, or and on this day, and this this event will uh, will also will also be an event where we renew our uh, renew and rededicate, uh, you know, and strengthen our vision and commitment to uh, education as responsible citizens of our country. Once again, thank you.